Hey YouTube. This project is um, something that I've been thinking about doing for a while. Um, where I live at the moment we uh, sometimes get brownouts which means that uh, when my router or router if you're in America uh, loses its power we essentially lose internet connectivity and as my house is provided through a, a fiber feed uh, it, uh, it would make sense to build some form of UPS uh, for uh, powering the, the router uh, essentially when we uh, get a brownout. Um, so here's a, an idea that uh, that I've been sort of looking at and uh, I think it should work. So um, what we've got on the, uh, the left hand side, so over here, uh, this is essentially a, a 220 uh, input um, power supply converting it down to 24 volts at 4 amps. Uh, I then got a, uh, a buck converter down here so I can step down uh, the voltage down to 12.6 volts and uh, the reason for that is so that I can then power these batteries here so these are lipo batteries uh, and these are the uh, 15 what are they they are the uh, uh, sorry they are the uh, 18650. So these are the 18650 batteries, <clears throat> which you find in many applications. And by putting them together uh, in a pack, um, I can uh, get essentially get to uh, to 12.6 volts um, across uh, the uh, the cells. So what I need to do is build those packs together, and then at the bottom here, um, finally we've got a charging circuit. So the charging circuit. Uh, will allow us to uh, uh, essentially charge up uh, the uh, the actual uh, batteries themselves and you can see it's a fairly basic battery charging circuit um, allows us to get to the the 12 volts and then when the, uh, the 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 volts gets to you know when it's fully charged obviously i can then uh, run that uh, through the uh, uh, to the, the router itself. Now the router will also be pulling power at the same time so um, the power supply at the top here has to be uh, fairly beefy to be able to uh, to cope with powering not only the uh, the charging circuits but also um, the um, the router itself and um, uh, I think the way that I'm going to set it up should be that uh, uh, it'll allow for exactly that. So what I now need to do is build it uh, and put it together so um, I will film various steps on the way. Right, I'm having the uh, the white paper give some contrast um, to the work area that I'm working on. So um, what I'm going to do is unpack the lipos uh, and then I'm going to put a little bit of card between them. Um, I will be getting some capstan tape uh, at some point, but just for the build, I'm just going to build them up fairly quickly. So um, to get into uh, these without uh, hurting them, I'm just going to cut the outer packaging. Uh, and these are brand new, so in theory they have some charge on them. Let me get the multimeter out so we can actually see what charge they've actually already been shipped with. Um, and what I don't have a spot welder uh, to do this, so I'm going to uh, take the risk of uh, of just um, uh, essentially uh, scratching the surface of the metal uh, and then um, attaching some wires between. Uh, the uh, the positive and negative terminals, or the, the two negative terminals, uh, and we're going to get sort of three banks of uh, of these together to give us the uh, the 12.6 volts that we're looking for. So um, let's just get these out. Um, I'll shut this down, and then we'll get the multimeter to see what readings we. Have. Okay, so we're set to uh, to 20 volts. Um, let's go for the first one. So 3.7. Next one, point seven one. Point seven five, so it's slightly higher. So the um, the charging circuit should, in theory, balance these out, and they go together. Point seven four, five. Point seven. Point seven four. 
so as you can see there there is charge in the uh, in the batteries already they haven't been pre-charged by me they've just come out from that packaging uh, and uh, what i will then do is uh, put uh, a piece of card between these two like so uh, and i will put a little bit of tape around them so that uh, we have some isolation uh, and then i'll be able to uh, put them in together and make a little pack up. I've got a, a glue gun here which can uh, allow me to uh, to sort of hold them together in a little bit more tight uh, in the future. So um, that is the next step for me is to put that together. I'll then uh, essentially uh, cause uh, the roughen these edges up, uh, which you'll see me do, uh, and uh, the same at the bottom. And I'll do that with all six of the uh, the batteries. Right. So we've got some 400 grit uh, sandpaper here and. Um, just going to roughen up the surface. There we go. Again with the bottom, where you can see that. And the idea is that um, then I can do a bit of a blob of solder on it and connect the uh, the two together. Quickly cut that. And I'll make up uh, another set of these as well. And then you'll see the, um, uh, the, the pack sort of finished off nose to tail as, uh, as one single unit. Once I've uh, finished off with uh, black taping some of these together. Let me just pop that one back on so you can see the final one. So there's one of the packs um, and uh, I'll make up the other two um, and you'll see the, uh, the final setup in a second. Okay, so I've got my wire strippers and cutters, so um, that's going to be my negative end, and then that's going to be my positive. So um, let's start by, so I want it to be, let's cut it off there. I think I need a little bit more, not the best cutters in the world give myself as much cable as possible. Okay, that should be quite... And if 
I cut it there. So that's tinned up that. That's nicely tinned up. Again, just need to work out the distance. I reckon cut it there. May get a pair of pliers just to hold on to that because that was quite tricky last time. Um, we get a quick set of needle nose pliers.